Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So tonight we're going to talk about Bolton and Trump and Korea and our diplomatic efforts there because they're coming back into the conversation. People are talking about what we should do. In order to know that, we should probably take a look at what we have done. It might give us a good blueprint. It might give us a little bit of insight into how all of this shaped up to begin with. And that might help. So that is going to form the basis of our little history lesson that we're going to start off with. All right, so 1910, Japan annexes Korea. Okay, becomes part of Japan. Now at the Yalta Conference, which is when the major allied powers um, played masters of the universe and just divided up the world at the end of World War II, it was decided that the northern portion of Korea, north of the 38th parallel, well that would go to the Soviets and the south would go to the Americans. And that's pretty much what happened. And everything was fine for a few years after the war. By 1949, though, most Soviet troops and American and British troops, they were gone. June of 1950, the North invades. Surprised pretty much everybody, except for Joseph Stalin, according to one argument. There is a widespread belief, one that I hold, that he knew that it was going to go down and that he greenlit it. It's like, yeah, do that. Because he wanted the Americans involved in a conflict in Asia to kind of keep them tangled up, keep them busy. He also predicted the eventual Chinese involvement. He did this because <laughs> he wanted a freer hand in Europe. He wanted to be able to consolidate power. Not just was he worried about his former allies, he was concerned about resistance within communist black countries. And that turned out to be a pretty accurate assessment on his part. In 1956 there was the Hungarian Revolution in Budapest. Um, and he, he was pretty, pretty spot on with what he thought was going to happen. But it is unlikely that the North would have invaded without at least a nod from Stalin. Okay, so since they took him by surprise, and nobody was expecting this, the communist forces, the North, made very, very, very quick gains. Um, and this obviously irritated the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. went to the U.N. At this time, the Soviet Union was boycotting the U.N. because they wouldn't admit China. That means that the Soviet Union could not exercise its veto on the Security Council. So, the UN authorized the use of military force. The US and allies went in. Pretty quickly, they pushed the Koreans back, the North Koreans back. Then, the Chinese intervened and pushed the UN and US forces back south. Eventually, the U.S. and U.N. forces push back, and we end up right around the 38th parallel, meaning all of this has been for nothing. Um, Eisenhower enters, and he wants peace. Now, prior to this, it was under uh, Harry Truman. Eisenhower wants peace, pushes for it. It takes uh, two years with fighting still going on and the lines not changing much until there is an armistice reach at Panmunjom. So, that's kind of how the actual war went down. That's, that's what happened as far as the involvement of the Soviet Union, Red China, North Korea, South Korea, all of that. Um, now, there is the idea, and it's something that we need to dispel, that the U.S. was there for South Korea's freedom. That sounds good. <laughs> the reality is, this entire time, the country was run by uh, Sigmund Rhee. And his regime was marked 
by massive corruption. I mean, like unbelievable corruption. Um, his reign came to an end when an election went way too much in his favor, considering how disliked he was. People believed it was rigged. And that belief turned into action. People took to the streets, and as they were headed to his home, surrounding his home, he was being flown out of the country with his wife on a DC-4 owned by Civil Air Transport. That's Air America. It's the CIA. And he flew to, I think, Honolulu and lived out his days there. I think on our dime, if I'm not mistaken. So, that's, that's how it went down. This was the soft colonialism that occurred after World War II. Now, during the Cold War, and this is important, during the Cold War, North Korea was under the umbrella of China and the Soviet Union when it came to mutually assured destruction. At the end of the Cold War, that didn't exist anymore. So, they want a deterrent. Why? Because they're on the list. We, we've talked about getting even since this happened. So, there's that worry on their part. That's where they're coming from. They want a deterrent. The senators and, and the pundits who talk about, well, North Korea may give it to these people and they may do something if they get one. No, that's not going to happen. And that's not going to happen. The reality is they want a strong deterrent. They don't want one. They want a whole bunch. And there's a long-standing saying when it comes to nuclear weapons. You don't need to worry about the person that wants 10. You need to worry about the person that wants one because they're going to use it. He just wants a deterrent. Now, as far as weapons of mass destruction goes, they have chemical. They have biological. They have that. They haven't used it. So the fear-mongering is probably pretty unwarranted. Now, the real reason the U.S. doesn't want them to have it is because we want to realign them. We want to change them from a communist country to a capitalist one. That's the reason. That's the real reason. And if they have that deterrent, well, we can't invade them at will if we so choose to. The reason we haven't is because they've spent all of this time developing a pretty good doctrine. It starts conventional and then goes unconventional. It's not one that we want. We don't want to fight that war. It's the reality of it. That's the reason nobody's ever done it. Um, so, that's where they're coming from. And the U.S. foreign policy, the hawkish foreign policy that John Bolton promotes is wrong. It's what's been promoted for half a century, and it's never worked. This is going to surprise pretty much everybody that's watched this channel for any length of time. Trump's approach of bringing them out through economics is probably right. He's probably correct. He's just not somebody can do it who can do it because he doesn't understand what they want. Um, you know, he goes over there talking about, well, we're going to build great hotels, and that, that they don't care. That's not what they need. It's not what they want. Now, if you're looking at it from a historical perspective, John Bolton's policy, when it comes to bringing countries that are in isolation, they're out of the international community, when it comes to bringing them back into the fold and bringing them back into the international community, how many times has that worked? I can think of one. <laughs> I can think of one. And that success is Iraq. That's not a really great success. How many times have we been able to bring a country out of international isolation via economics? It's a list too long for me to go through. Trump is probably right. He just can't execute it. And because he doesn't really have experienced foreign policy people on hand, nobody can guide him through it. Um, long term, that's probably the approach that needs to be used. If everybody's 
engaged in trade, there's less chance of a war. They're going to feel more comfortable. They're not going to need that deterrent. That's the idea. They're going to feel more prosperous. He, the, the ruler, whoever it is at the time, will be uh, more seated, more in power because his people won't be unhappy. It, it worked with a lot of countries. And that's probably the route we should go. Short term, we just need to make sure that nobody starts a war that nobody wants to fight and we can't win and isn't going to accomplish the goal anyway. Until then, our best bet is to just try to delay them obtaining a weapon. That's it. And if they do, uh, it's not the end of the world. This isn't a crazy madman regime despite the fear-mongering media. Um, they've had the ability to wreak havoc for a very, very long time through other means. They never have. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.